Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to talk about something really interesting. It's the density of water and the effect of life on Earth. And yeah, I just threw that one in at the end because actually it has a profound effect on the Earth and its biosystem. So, what we find is, first of all, of course, when ice turns into, I mean, when water turns into ice, when water freezes, it expands, which means that ice will float on top of the water. But in addition to that, water is most dense when it's at about four degrees centigrade, which means when it's zero deg degrees centigrade, so when ice turns into water, it is less dense than when the water reaches a temperature of four degrees. That's a very strange phenomena. After that, the density of water begins to decrease again. So what does that mean? Well, let's take, for example, a lake somewhere in the northern hemisphere. And let's say it's uh, filled with water. And let's say that this is a summer day, and so outside it may be 20 degrees centigrade. And let's say that the top layer of the water is maybe at 15 degrees centigrade, and maybe it's 10 degrees centigrade here, and 5 degrees centigrade down at the bottom of the lake. All right, that seems to make sense because you can see at temperatures of water greater than 4 degrees, the warmer it is, the less dense the water is, so it tends to rise to the surface. But what happens then when the fall comes and the temperature of the lake now starts dropping and so now the temperature may be only 10 degrees centigrade outside, which means that the water at the very top layer will of course begin to cool down and the uh, heat will be escaping uh, to the atmosphere and the water will cool until it reaches the same temperature as the atmosphere. So now we have 10 degrees centigrade water at the top and maybe 5 degrees centigrade of water at the bottom. All right, what if it continues to cool down. Okay, what now the temperature goes down to 5 degrees on the outside. So now what happens is again the water will continue to cool down. But what happens now is as the water becomes colder than the layers underneath it, the warmer layers will rise to the top because they're less dense and the colder layers will sink to the bottom because they're more dense. And so what happens is the 10 degree water uh, will slowly become 5 degree water. It will come down the, the warm water will then rise to the top and eventually all of the water will reach a temperature of 5 degrees centigrade. Okay, what if it continues to cool down? What if winter time arrives and now the water, or I should say the air outside becomes 0 degrees centigrade? Now of course we have the water being 5 degrees centigrade everywhere, but what happens here, the water here will then go to 4 degrees centigrade and when it does, from, from 5 to 4, it becomes heavier then the 5 degrees centigrade water, the 5 degrees centigrade water will rise to the top and there'll be like a, a circulation of water until all of the water had reached 4 degrees centigrade because if it's 4 degrees centigrade it will rise to the bottom and let me illustrate that here. So we have 0 degrees centigrade air at the top, the water underneath becomes 4 degrees centigrade and we have 5 degrees centigrade water here which will rise to the top and then we have 4 degrees centigrade water which will rise to the bottom and slowly and surely all the water will reach a temperature of 4 degrees centigrade until the water continues to cool down so we have <coughs> 0 degrees centigrade outside and so what happens now is we end up with 3 degrees centigrade water there this is 4 degrees centigrade, 4 degrees centigrade and what happens now? Well because of the unique property of water that circulation stops 4 degrees centigrade water is colder than 3 degrees centigrade water, so the less than, or I should say, the 4 degrees centigrade water is more dense than 3 degrees centigrade water, so the 3 centigrade degree water stays at the top, 4 centigrade degree water stays at the bottom. Say, let's say that it gets colder and colder and colder outside, so now we have a temperature of minus 5 degrees centigrade, and the water continues to cool down at the top. This will be 0 degrees centigrade, and of course, there'll be some circulation here that this will be uh, maybe 2 degrees centigrade water, 4 degrees centigrade water, and of course, once the top layer reaches 0 degrees centigrade and it's colder than that outside, that water will begin to freeze and turn into ice. And so what we have now is we have a layer of ice, and the ice will, t con uh, will continue to cool down until it reaches maybe temperatures equal to the temperature outside. And of course we have zero degree water underneath it, and one degree water, two degree water, and all the way down to four degrees centigrade water like that. And all winter long, ice will stay at the top, the ice will get colder and warmer depending upon the temperature of the air, but at the bottom of the lake, the water will continue to be four degrees centigrade. And 
Water will not be circulating around because uh, colder water is less dense than warm water, so it'll continue to be separated, and water is a very poor conductor of heat, and so all winter long, water will stay like that at the bottom of the lake. Now, of course, the lake is not very deep. The water may be not quite 4 degrees centigrade at the bottom. Same kind of thing happens in the oceans, and the water at the very bottom of the oceans tend to be around 4 degrees centigrade and uh, warmer up on top except maybe in the Arctic regions, but this is the unique property of ice. Now, what would happen if that wasn't the case? Well, what would happen if this water was a normal substance, like 99.9% .9 of all other substances in the universe, and it got to be really cold outside, let's say minus five degrees centigrade, and ice would be forming at the top. Normally, frozen substances are more dense than, than the non-frozen substances, and ice would sink to the bottom, and water would sink to the top, and if you had uh, four degree water at the bottom, it would sink to the, it would rise to the top, ice would sink to the bottom, and slowly but surely, the whole lake would fill full of ice at the bottom as the frozen ice sinks to the bottom, and warmer water rises to the top, and eventually the entire body of water would com become completely frozen. Now, what would happen in the springtime? Well, in the springtime it would get warmer, so maybe the temperature would go up to 10 degrees centigrade. It would melt the ice at the top, so this would become water, and it would slowly ri rise in temperature to maybe 5 degrees centigrade, but this would still be a block of ice, and if ice was more dense on water, it would never rise to the surface. It couldn't get very much heat from above. It would remain frozen, and you can see that in the northern hemisphere and far down in south in the southern hemisphere, all bodies of water, oceans, lakes, and everything would fill up with ice and would just have a thin layer of water in the summer and would completely be frozen solid in the wintertime. A very different picture than what actually happens because of that density of water. So, Interestingly enough, water has this very interesting property, and because of that, life on Earth is very possible. Again, without it, it would be a very different situation.